How confident are you after these full year earnings that actually are at a record that you can continue on this trajectory given all of the challenging environment around you? Well, I'm very pleased with the fact that we've been able to report 30 billion uh, of PBT, which is obviously a record. But also, I'm very pleased with the return on tangible equity. We've been working hard for the past four years to make sure we deliver mid teens returns. And we did that last year. You know, before no material notable items, we had a return on tangible equity of 15.6%. Um, I'm also really pleased with the dividends we've announced, 61 cents, which is the highest dividend for the full year since 2008. And we completed $7 billion of buyback. And we announced another $2 billion, up to $2 billion buyback this year. So I'm really pleased with that. Strong capital generation. And I believe with a CET1 ratio of 14.8%, we've got strong potential future capital uh, distribution as well. In the fourth quarter, we did have some noise in the numbers. We had three principal mm -hmm. items that pulled down the profit. The first one was we rebooked the loss on sale of our uh, French operation now that we completed that transaction. It's neutral for the year because we took a credit on that in Q1 and we've taken a charge in Q4. So that nets each other out yeah. and neutral. There was an adjustment for hyperinflation in Argentina driven by the devaluation that took place. That's really a technical issue. And then the th third issue, uh, technical issue, was BOCOM. Uh, we have a, had had an investment in BOCOM for 20 years. Every quarter we have to do a valuation in use test. We did that again this quarter, updated the model. And it compares the yep. value in use to the carrying value. And no. the value in use dropped below. And that resulted in a $3 billion charger. I just want to make clear that has no impact on our capital position of any significance. Mm -hmm. It does not prohibit distribution because it's non-capital impactful. It is a technical accounting issue. And I also want to reiterate, we have strong confidence in the China economy. We believe there are right. huge opportunities ahead. And we believe that our partnership with BOCOM has been a good partnership for 20 years. And that status has not changed. And, and all given what you've just explained, are, th are there any large asset sales ahead? Is there anything else that you're thinking either that you need to sell off or actually that there, there could be some kind of accounting concern? Well, I think we've got the final uh, leg of our disposal of Canada to come at the end of Q1. Um, that will be a big uh, sale completion. We're on track for that at the end of Q1. That will allow us to, as we've already announced, first use of proceeds. We would like to use the first use of proceeds as a special dividend of mm -hmm. 21 cents. We continue to look at the portfolio to make sure the portfolio um, is strategically correctly positioned and no businesses are underperforming. But I think we've done the material transactions, uh, but we will continue to adapt and change if we feel as though part of the portfolio is not strategic or is underperforming. I also want to recap on Q4. If you revert, if you take the profit, yeah. the underlying profit before material notables, Q4 reports would have been a 7.3 billion uh, PBT, which is well up on the prior uh, quarter in 2022. No, just going back to some of the, your potential significant sales, are you also close to identifying any potential new bolt-on acquisitions? We keep looking at bolt-ons, and we've done quite a few. I was really pleased that we were, um, we've announced the acquisition of Citibank's wealth business in China. That follows um, two other investments we've put into China recently taken our shareholding in our insurance joint venture from 50% to 100% and the securities joint venture from 50% to 90%. So you can see our confidence in China is still strong and we're investing and we've done three bolt-ons there. We'll continue to look for bolt-ons, particularly in our wealth management uh, business. Um, we believe buying additional product capability, specialism or distribution capability uh, would be interesting, but we'll only um, announce anything on that where, as and when we got a transaction to, to complete. Have you identified anything at the moment and in which part of the world? We're, all, we're always looking. Uh, the, the world is more, it's more around our wealth business uh, and we're trying to re really build out our international wealth and international retail banking proposition. And wherever we see opportunity to enhance that and accelerate the organic growth plan, we'll consider those bolt-ons. But nothing's in, 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 in the near-term pipeline at the moment. Are, are you still confident, Noel, that actually the Chinese property market has bottomed out? 
Yes, I am, Francine. I, I think uh, when I signalled it at Q3, I think I believe the market as a whole has hit the bottom. I did say back then it still will take time for it to recover, and I believe it will recover in a gradual and progressive basis, not with one big bang stimulus package. But I have been pleased to see some of the stimulus that has gone into the Chinese economy in recent months. But that's more around stimulating the demand side of the economy rather than stimulating the supply side. And I think that's the right thing to do, because then you'll get a more enduring and sustainable recovery in the sector. It does mean that there will still be some developers that have got to work through their challenges. But I do believe the bottom has been reached. How concerned are you about recent developments in U.S. commercial real estate? And are you worried that spills over to the U.K. and other markets and that will lead to write downs and provisions? No, I think we've taken a fairly cautious position. And if you go back over the last two to three to four years, we've been progressively de-risking our portfolio, particularly in commercial real estate in the U.S. I think our book today in the U.S. Uh, would probably be circa 50 percent or less than the book we would have had there four or five years ago. So I think we're well positioned. We're watching it closely. And I think we've done a similar cautionary position in the UK commercial real estate market. I think they it's really a function of the post-COVID world and the demand for commercial real estate is a lot lower today than it would have been four or five years ago. But I think we're ahead of the curve on that. Uh, no, given you're giving back some two billion to shareholders, can shareholders expect in the year about seven billion in terms of what you're giving back to them? Uh, listen, I'm not giving a prediction on 2024, but um, what I can confirm is we we completed seven billion of buyback in 2023. But I'm not giving a prediction beyond what we've just announced, which is up to a further two billion of uh, buyback uh, we've announced today. But clearly, we have strong capital generation capability. And I do want to draw your attention to our confidence is there in the reiteration of our 2024 target to deliver mid-teens returns. We've reiterated that target today. Uh, that gives you a measure of confidence. And it will give you a measure of our ability to continue to distribute to our shareholders. You know, if you look at all of what we distributed on 2023, that's around about $19 billion of capital return to our shareholders. Um, with respect to the year of 2023. Um, what you'll see is our CET1 ratio finished the year at 14.8%. Um, we'll do the buyback in Q1, we'll take it down a bit, but then we've got the completion of the sale of Canada. And we said before that that is probably going to be circa uh, over 100 basis points accretive to CET1 when that completes. So, no, what are you telling me, that that actually shareholders should maybe get a little bit less than they did last year, or it's still wait and see? I'm not giving you any guidance on that, Francine, but it was very good of you to try for a second time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, what thank I you so much. You'll have to come back on. You... Right. Yeah. No, carry no, tell on. Me. I just, well, listen, I wanted to just say that we're very cognizant of the fact that interest rates are starting to decline. We see that as a positive by the way, Francine, because that's inflation coming down, leading to lower interest rates, leading to the potential for an, a pickup in economic activity as the second half of 2024 uh, comes into sight and beyond. And I think that is where we see opportunities for further revenue growth beyond just interest income.